But my name is Debbie Bender, Deborah Bender, occupational therapist, and I am a certified driver rehabilitation specialist. Um, I um, do a program out of Valley Health, which is in Winchester, Virginia. Have I been up to Winchester? Got about 18 to 20 inches of snow. Is that what you guys got? Yeah. So it's been kind of crazy for our driving program. But I um, wanted to explain a little bit about pretty much what our program is all about, um, what we look at, what we evaluate, so that in a sense, if you have a client, an older person that concerns about them continuing to drive or DMVs requiring them to go through our program, you kind of know what a driver evaluation involves as far as, as a medical evaluation for driving. But basically, just to let you know, I am an occupational therapist um, and I've been an occupational therapist for 30 years. I've done driver rehab probably for about 25 to 28 of those years. I am a certified driver rehab specialist, which um, means I did have uh, it's my specialty within OT and there's extra credentialing that's required. and and everything um, and I am recognized by the state of Virginia Department of Motor Vehicles as a certified driver rehab specialist unfortunately in the state of Virginia there are not that many of us um, and we do get a lot of clients from here around Harrisonburg and people will drive because they need an evaluation for their driving um, so we get it you know two hours away I have them from Maryland Pennsylvania West Virginia um, and again starting to see more around this area um, no they do have to come to us um, the program around here, if you guys are familiar, Woodrow Wilson Rehab used to do driver evaluations. They still do, um, but they are now only working with clients that are connected to DRS, Department of Rehab Services. So we're starting to see a lot more clients coming to our program from he this area also. Basically, with our driving program, I want to explain kind of how it works, the process. Somebody's identified that they need a driving evaluation. Um, it could be a family member's concern about an older person driving. It could be um, a physician saying I'm, this person should not be driving or I have concerns that they can continue to drive. Um, so um, the first thing we do is there's some uh, type of referral source. But no matter who refers them, even DMV will require them to come to our program, require them, or they can get their license back sometimes. We have to have an order from a physician, and that is a sample of what we, or what we like the information to include is in the brochure that's going around. Um, the first thing we do is what we call a pre-driving evaluation, and I'll go over that a little bit uh, uh, more in depth. Um, our pre-driving evaluation takes about an hour and a half to two hours in the clinic. So the first time we see a client, we will not take them driving. Um, we do a thorough evaluation, and again, I'll go over all the different parts of that in a few minutes. Um, based on their pre-driving evaluation, we make a determination, are they good, fair, poor, questionable to try our on-the-road assessment? Um, our on-the-road assessment, we do not use their vehicle. Um, we have our own driver training car, and we also have special devices in there, if depending on what the client may need. Um, the, um, the other thing about the two parts evaluation, there is a cost, and insurance does not pay. Most times does not pay. So it is an out-of-pocket expense to our folks, and it can be tough for our older clients. Um, you know, I usually try to tell them, well, it's about, about the cost of changing your tires on your vehicle. You know, we take care of our vehicle, we pay insurance, we, we have to keep a personal property tax, we have to license it, we have to tag it, all those things. Um, and then we, then again, it's, this is just a part of it. I say it's, you know, you take care of your vehicle, we want to take care of our driver in the vehicle also. Um, our clinical assessment right now costs 275 and our on the road is 175 and you'll see them anywhere between 400 to $800, depending on where the person's going. There are some programs that will drive to a client. Uh, Dina Garrison Jones does a program out of Waynesboro. She does a private um, program. Um, she will drive to clients, but then that has the cost go up to them. And that's the other thing that's kind of frustrating because that's the reason why they need a driving evaluation because they're having trouble with their transportation issues. So it's kind of a uh, issue sometimes for people. Um, anyways, we see all types of individuals. I do see a lot of older folks and I do get a lot of people calling me saying, I'm really concerned about my dad, I'm concerned about my grandfather, um, they're still driving and, and or either, you know, I don't know, my, my grandmother just ran through a red light and she didn't get a ticket, the policeman stopped her, but now DMV's making her go through your program. So we do see a lot of uh, clients that are older and um, um, we see them in all ages, and they'll, you know, I've certainly have clients will come in and they'll say, well, 
you're just basing your evaluation on my age. I'm like, no, we're looking at your abilities. And there are certainly people that are in their 20s that should be not driving, and there's people in their 80s that should not be driving. So we do not discriminate on age. So when you said DMV's making them, so it doesn't have to be a DMV can, I guess if you will make someone go to you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. DMV, a lot of times what we're seeing now, especially with our older clients, in the state of Virginia, there's no mandatory thing about, you know, going and having a reevaluation with DMV when you reach 75 or 80. Some places have that, um, some states. Well, Virginia, we're not mandatory. They're not mandatory. The only thing that's in the books right now for, is when you're 80. When you turn 80, you're supposed to go to down to DMV when you renew your license and show them an eye report from your eye doctor. That's the only thing. So what we're seeing is that these clients, these older folks, if they're stopped for any reason, that police officer has a list of things to look for. If there's any, anything on that list that he sees questionable for that client, it could be their age, it might be using a walker, they might be, you know, kind of having trouble reading um, something the policeman's showing them, then that person would get reported to the Medical Review Board in Richmond. And then what the Medical Review Board in Richmond, the DMV Medical Review Board, the DMV Medical Review Board, DMV Medical Review Board is going to um, first have that client, depending on what the, 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 the police officer said, um, uh, fill out a medical form, have their physician fill out a medical form about, you know, medical, and then that goes back to the DMV medical review. They're going to look over it and see if there's any questions or red flags. And if they don't feel they could test that person on the road again at DMV, they're going to send them to a driver rehab program. And basically what they want to do is say, are they safe to get in a car with that client? They want us to tell them that. Is that person ready to test? Because when we test, we have our vehicle, we have a brake, we can stop the individual. Um, when they test with DMV, they go in their own vehicle. Yes, and yeah, please ask questions. This is a round table, right? Yes. Is there a way to alert the DMV to issues? Yes, 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 yes. Um, <laughs> right, and that happens all the time. Um, you can, anybody can report to DMV that there's a concern about a client and they're driving. Anybody can do that. They will not, there is a, a, a clause that says if a physician or a family member reports that individual, they will not release that information to the client, okay? So if you are a professional or somebody that's seen that client, you have concerns and you report that to DMV, they may release that information back to the client. Um, a lot of times I'll tell clients to go ahead and, and, or their family, if they have a concern and they, you know, report that to DMV. However, you will find, if you read the indictments and things, people drive on suspended license, and a lot of people are still out there driving that should not be driving. Um, but yeah, you can report that, and basically it's uh, uh, the DMV Medical Review Board in Richmond, and um, basically that kind of alerts them, and then they're going to start the process to say, well, let's get a medical report from the doctor to find out what's going on. So um, it will start that process. Okay, let me see what else we got there. So that's kind of our program. Um, some of the equipment, we do adaptive equipment with clients. Um, you know, sometimes you hear you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but I think you can. Um, we do have some clients that sometimes end up having to use hand controls because they can't use their legs at all, um, or they have to um, use a left accelerator if they've had an amputation on the right leg or a stroke or some other condition. Um, it, some, sometimes we do have clients that they really do not, can't comprehend enough to use new, ad, new adaptive equipment. So that, sometimes there, that is a problem. But um, interesting enough, uh, what I'm seeing a lot lately uh, of are clients that have peripheral neuropathy. Um, could be diabetes, could be other easy, but we're seeing a lot of that. And these clients are up walking. They may be using a walker or cane, but they can't feel their feet. They can walk on them because they got the input all the way through the hips, but they can't feel their feet. So we're seeing a lot of them, and they're going to hand, um, hand controls. So it's amazing how many, uh, um, just because the client's walking, but again, you get them in there and we do our gas brake reaction, they cannot tell where their feet are, where their gas and brake are. Or they've come to us because their foot has slipped off the brake and they've hit a wall. And they'll say, I can't use my feet for driving around. I'm like, you're right. Um, so we try to get them, get them in those hand controls if we can. And this particular lady, one of the things that's important, and um, I know a lot of you are caregivers or work with the clients directly, being to safely get in and out of a car is very important. So we make sure that they can get in and out of a car and can they manage their equipment. You know, I have some clients that, I had one gentleman that 
he, you know, you had to be right with him to walk to the vehicle. He's not going to be safe to drive because I'm going to feel concerned when he can't get to the car because he's fallen. This is some example of our, some of our adaptive equipment. That's the left accelerator. It just fits on the, the floorboard of the car, um, and then it, um, the client would use their left foot. They don't even use their right foot. Our new ones actually block them from hitting the regular gas because they might be wearing a prosthesis. Sometimes our clients will take off their prosthesis when they drive. Um, but again, can they get to and from the car safely? Um, again, just some other adaptive devices that we use in our program, steering knobs. You got to remember they used to call them suicide knobs. They're illegal unless you need them. So all this equipment, we have to let DMV know what that, condition, that patient's medical condition is and what equipment they're using. Um, the, the lever on the right here is a right turn signal lever. If your signals are over here, you've had a stroke, you can't use this arm, you've got to switch them to this side so we can ad, um, adapt the car to make it fit the person's need because of a physical disability. Okay, and that's just a set of hand controls on the left there, excuse me, on the right. Um, and again, that's one pedal, one, one lever that does brake for ga um, brake and gas in the same lever. And then the person would use a knob to steer because they're steering one-handed. So it's like doing this. So some of our clients can learn it, some of them can't. But um, I've had them in the 70s, do, get, you, know, up, you know, low 80s, get back into using hand controls. So the skills that we're looking at to drive, um, people say, well, I didn't realize I did all those things. Well, actually, we use all those skills, and we have to use them quickly to make good, quick decisions. So cognition, our vision, our physical fitness. And um, as you know, the, like going to the pool, I tell our, the, my older folks, you know, you're going to drive longer if you're physically fit you will be able to do more. Um, social skills and attitude are real important too. Um, we get some people who get angry behind the wheel. We get, you know, certainly you've seen some hand motions when you've been going down the road there. <laughs> um, and again, uh, just some basic cognitive skills. You guys know what those are. Um, things that are real important behind the wheel when we're driving, our attention, our memory. Um, and uh, what I find a lot of times with our older folks, what I've got to make sure is they're not just driving from point A to point B without thinking. And a lot of them can do that. You know, we have, I've seen clients that have dementia and Alzheimer's, and, and they are getting from point A to point B, but they really don't know what's in between. They're, they're, it's repetition. It's like putting on their pants in the morning. Um, so it is important to know, are they going it based on long-term memory? Or are they able to stay in the moment and make decisions current? Okay, and then um, visual skills. We do a lot of visual testing. 90 to 95% of driving is visual. If we don't see something, we're not going to react. We're not going to execute um, our thinking skills. So vision is so important. So um, they'll come in with a report from their eye doctor, but I'm, a lot of our visual testing is not necessarily, it is what they visually can see, but it's how they use their vision. You know, you can have 20-20, but if you're sitting like this and looking right ahead, you're going to have accidents, okay? Um, we make sure that they um, can actually um, have good depth perception, uh, visual field. Um, you know, as we are we're dealing with the elderly client, and um, we might see things like glaucoma. Um, we'll see uh, macular degeneration, degeneration, and you know that's where it, you know messes up the central vision. So they're kind of driving like this, you know, and you can see that when you do some of the testing in the clinic. Um, visual perceptual skills, which is also not just cognitive, not visual, but it's also cognitive. And that's kind of how we perceive things and what may look normal to us may not look normal to them. Um, so we have to evaluate those. Uh, contrast sensitivity, sensitivity is really big with our um, older folks too. And that's being able to kind of um, visually see differences in shades and lighting. So like a cloudy day may be um, tough for a client because there's not, or not much contrast. A very bright day would be, um, you know, the glare would affect their contrast. Um, and then again, driving at nighttime, there's less, you know, um, um, color vision at night. So again, um, and as we get older, we need more light. That's just, that's normal aging. Um, the other thing that we do check out, strength, flexibility, range of motion, um, you know, basically, I have these clients that say, oh, my arms are fine. I tell them to lift their arms up and they go to here. I'm like, you know, I can't, well, that's an old rotator cuff injury. But basically, you really only need about 90 degrees at your shoulders. Um, we do look for about 20 pounds of grip, 20 to 25 pounds of grip. So we test grip in the clinic to see what, what they can grip. Um, also, um, 
you know, they always says OTs look more at upper extremities, PTs look at lower. But as a driving therapist, I have to look at lowers a lot, or all the time with driving, to see how well they are moving their legs, do they have the sensation in their legs, um, and what is their reaction time. Um, we do have a reaction time tester in our clinic, and, you know, the course will get, well, that's not like my car, you know, that's not like my car. And I'm like, well, this is testing, this has been normed to say how fast you move from point A to point B when you see a red light. Um, also, just how a client takes the test. If they can't follow directions, I'll comment on that also. So, um, again, the physical abilities of the client is very important behind the wheel. Um, the other one, neck rotation. Um, always check that on a client to see how well they can turn their neck. If they can't, we want to see if they can kind of turn their body. What we're finding is, as we get older, our, our vision normally will decline a little bit peripheral vision. Um, so that, uh, that's why our seniors sometimes will make these erratic lane changes because they're not looking. And we've got to make sure that they are kind of checking that blind spot when they change lanes. And that's where a lot of them are getting into trouble. I never saw that car coming, so it must not have come, you know. Uh, must have been there. So uh, real important to test their, test their physical skills. Um, and these are just some things, again, that I've kind of touched on that normal aging. Folks, this is normal aging I'm talking about now. Things that are going to happen if they haven't already happened. Um, we get a decrease in visual acuity. I have to use my readers now, you know. Um, we need more light to see. So again, yes, ma'am. You're not hearing? How? Oh, hearing. <laughs> yeah, that one, that's affected too. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's right, that's right, right. Yeah, hearing is real important too um, for driving. Oh, yeah, well, basically you find out, are they wearing hearing aids? And I'll see how they do in the clinic. And then when we're on the road, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll kind of point. And, we, you know, when we're driving, if they can't hear the actual directions and things for the hearing. But, again, hearing is very limiting. I mean, it just, a lot of times, but again, they can, tend to drive straight, you know, very poor hearing. They don't, they're not aware of other things. Um, interesting, if I get somebody that was, you know, deaf from a young age, they're like this. They're, uh, they are scanning, they are looking, they are cognitively in there. Um, but when we've gradually lost our hearing, it becomes more of a deficit for driving because, again, you're not hearing the car beeping that you're in their lane or you're not, you know. So, again, with our older clients, we're going to make sure if they're not able to turn and be checking more visually and make that more of a, a habit, then it's going to be tough for them to continue driving. Um, there are some devices you can get uh, for a vehicle that will flash if there's like a siren going off in the car so they'll know to kind of look around. So there are some alerts and things you can get for a vehicle. But again, um, decreased hearing, we've got to see increase in visual skills to compensate. Okay, a um, couple things. Cognition, you know, they say what I've always learned and from courses and everything, you have the most brain cells you're going to have at 20. At 20, so we're all starting to go downhill, unless there's somebody under 20 here, I don't know. Uh, we start losing our brain cells. Um, and what makes it dementia or normal aging is the rate of how fast we're losing those cells. Okay, so um, anyways, we do, again, cognition is real important, and we are going to lose some short-term memory as we get older. That's, that's going to happen. Um, Long-term memory stays intact. And that's what the clients will tell you. Well, I know, you know, but I don't know, you know, an orientation. I don't know what year it is. I was born in this year, but I don't know what year is now. Um, and also the recall and retrieval of information. And you know that. When somebody asks you something, you'll say, I can't think of it. And then at midnight, you remember it, and you have to call that person at midnight to tell them. Um, but anyway, so those are normal aging changes. Because our bodies are aging, our eyes are aging. Um, it's, you know, it's, what's that? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, yeah, good. I'm glad you said that. Um, so, um, and again, just physically, you know, um, I'm, at 80, you lose up to two inches. I think I've already lost a half an inch myself, but um, I can't afford to lose that. And then what happens, they, the person gets shorter and then their car gets bigger, right? <laughs> they kind of go down in their car, so real important. Um, again, um, those are normal aging. Now we got to look at things that not only, most of us don't, we age, 
normally. But then again, now we got these older folks that are going to have things like medications. They may have some other medical conditions, strokes, Parkinson's, dementia starts to occur, um, diabetes. Seen a lot of issues with diabetes lately. Um, and then we'll start to have some falls and some fractures. So that's more of the things that are starting to happen that are affecting um, normal aging. And um, these are just some, we do a lot of education to our clients when we're working with them um, on mental fitness, on visual fitness, things they can do, um, uh, judgment and safety awareness. So it is a lot of uh, going out with our clients, instructing them and teaching them and seeing if they can follow through with some of the recommendations and use of new equipment if that's what they need. And um, again, social skills are real important behind the wheel. And I'll get the older folk that say, I don't care what you tell me, I'm going to drive anyways. And so that can be a, be a problem. Um, let's see, the other thing is that I'll just bring up, I don't know if any of you all have uh, had clients that go through CarFit. Do they do that program around here? Real good to send your clients or people you know, older folks, to that. It's not evaluating the driver. It's, we need to start somewhere. It's the fit of the driver in the vehicle and how the car's set up. And we find that there are a lot of newfangled things out there now. There's, you know, side mirrors, uh, 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 side cameras, uh, all these things. And we're finding our older folks don't know how to use it. They got these brand new cars. They don't know how to use their devices. Sometimes I, I think it's more of a hindrance than it is a help sometimes. So we have to look at that. But car fits are good programs to send. It's a free program also. And again, the other thing that might have to come up is you have to talk about driving retirement. And, and that can be a tough, sticky thing. Um, and I've talked to the, the client and the patient in there. Um, try to not just say, you know, you, know, you should no longer be driving. And the, the problem is the client does not understand that, but everybody else knew that before the client even came in there, um, that this person should not be driving. So we say, if you're going to take something away, you got to make it positive and try to give up with alternate transportation options. And um, so it is important that we have a list of things or resources we can give the family or the client. We talk about, you know, some of these retirement communities, there's transportation available. I'm sure there's some available here, right? Like to go to the grocery store, um, yep, shopping, things like that. And we're saying, start to use that. So it might be important for some of you all to actually work with clients on do, using those services and planning ahead. Um, anyways, that's... That is about it, um, but again, I uh, um, appreciate y'all services that you do to, for the clients. Um, and again, our, job, our goal is to keep people driving longer and safer. And just wanted to finish with um, this article. It was in the paper today. So a very positive article. It was in Winchester um, uh, Star today. It says, study the accident rates improve for older drivers. So they're seeing that it's improving. So I think part of it, they're saying that um, I think the people become more aware of the need to address driving in elderly. There's more services available, more education for the client. Um, they did mention that uh, technology, cars are becoming more safer and, and, and elderly friendly, if you will. Um, but I thought that was a very positive thing to say that we, we have been trying to address driving in elderly, and now we're seeing some outcome from that. So, okay. any questions?